Hey guys, what's up? So, I got a question from a guy named uh, Mahir, and he says, Hey Chris, I recently started seeing your videos. I'm a computer engineering major, and many times I feel like nothing interests me in software anymore. I can think of apps and software I want to create, but just coding doesn't interest me anymore. It all seems like a lifeless algorithm now. Learn the technology. Your idea needs to be implemented. Start writing. Hack together existing APIs. Google all the bugs, implement better algorithms to make the software faster and keep up with technology. It all feels the same and hence boring for some reason. Uh, tips or advice? So, um, thanks for the question. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. I mean, software engineering isn't always great. Like, uh, but I don't know that any, any job really is truly that awesome. Um, but here, here's the good news for you though, is that uh, most, well, maybe not most, but a lot of programmers that I've worked with um, and that I know of, uh, they, they don't necessarily enjoy programming all that much either. I mean, they, they don't go home and try to study the faster ways of, of discovering uh, or how to, to you know, recursively do something better or, you know what I mean? Like they're not trying to even uh, hone in on their skills in a lot of cases. They, um, you know, if they're doing C Sharp or something, then they're, they're content being a C Sharp developer and they don't really want to learn JavaScript or, or JSON or jQuery and all that stuff. And, um, assuming that their job doesn't push them down that, that path of, of making it a requirement, then they're okay with just essentially just, you know, the status quo. So um, I would say a lot of programmers are probably in the same boat. You know, they're not thrilled by the, the problems and things that, that need to be solved. So it sounds to me like, um, you know, maybe, maybe you're, well, I think what you're going through is normal, number one. So if you're being pushed really hard and you're working for a company that is, um, you know, writing, working you to death, and I, I could see being burned out. A lot of programmers do get burned out because they start working some crazy hours, and they get sold on one company's vision after another, um, and eventually they do burn out. Like, I mean, people want to uh, experience life. You need to get out in nature. You want to, you want to go on vacations. You want to, you know, own things that that uh, make you happier. And most of all, you want to find happiness, and whether that's in like family or uh, or doing something else, and then that's, um, you know, then you know, to each their own. Everybody's got their own path that they need to follow. But um, with programming, and I said this in one of my previous videos, that it gives you the opportunity to get your feet wet in all kinds of different areas that uh, you may not normally be able to in other jobs. So, like, say you wanted to be a zoologist. Well, obviously, you have to go and, and study to be a zoologist or you need to be a veterinarian, veterinarian or whatever. But, um, you know, in programming, you could be working on a veterinary project, you know, that, that is, uh, you know, helping veterinarians, you know, build some sort of vision or something to help animals or, you know, SPCA or whatever it is that you might uh, be interested in doing. And, and you could be doing that one day and then maybe one day you want to get into, you know, space and, and uh, so aerospace and design and stuff like that. So if you're, if you're good enough, you can transition, I, I would say, um, in, in many cases uh, to do different things in, in different industries. So. Uh, I, you know, depending on what you're doing right now, you know, it probably does suck. So if all you're, if all you're doing is just some, uh, some basic API lookups or, you know, tapping into APIs and, uh, you know, maybe it is boring, but the, the thing is, is that, um, it, it, if I'm developing though, I never truly feel like it's like, tr like really, really boring. In fact, I would say that my days go by relatively fast for the most part. So, um, you said that you're an engineering major, so I'm assuming you don't actually have that degree. So you're probably spending a ton of time um, studying to get that degree, I would imagine. I, I, I didn't go to school for, I, uh, for IT, so I, I wouldn't know. But um, I don't know, man. I mean, and another thing, too, is uh, I don't have the, 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 the actual stats in front of me, but uh, I, I had read that a majority of STEM graduates, which is like, you know, engineering and, uh, and programming, that, that a majority of them at least in the United States that have that STEM degree, they don't even have a job in the STEM field. So I would say a lot of people, they get into programming because they think it's going to be a lucrative market and it doesn't agree with them and they end up doing something else. And maybe, you know, they work as, um, you know, a sales manager somewhere or something for some, I mean, it could be any, like there, there's so many different possibilities that you could end up, um, you know, with a computer science degree, you might go into insurance or banking or something. So, um, I don't know, man. Uh, if if programming is not your thing, uh, I don't know that you've given it enough time to make that determination. But uh, I would say, in in some sense, like right now, because I've 
Uh, I got a question, and I want to make a video about this, but just briefly I'll touch upon it. Uh, somebody asked me if I was interested in UX, um, so like user experience design, like CSS, and some of the latest web trends and stuff like that. And there was a time where I was very interested in it, and that was like the, the thing that I was most interested in. So even though I was running a Django back end, I was like very in touch with a lot of the latest web standards and where everything was going and headed. And um, that actually led me down uh, to, to be able to land my first job because I didn't just get hired as a C-sharp engineer. Like, I mean, I didn't have the necessary experience to be able to do that. So I get brought in um, more as a user interface kind of guy, like a good guy that was really good with JavaScript and HTML and CSS. And um, I eventually, I, I quickly be able, uh, was able to adapt to being a C-sharp engineer because I had done a lot of Python and Perl and other, other stuff before that. But um, th so the thing was, I was very passionate about that. Um, and, and when I got asked that question, I realized, wow, like I have not visited blogs discussing the latest UX trends in quite some time. And I don't really have any interest. Why? Because all day long, I'm, I'm hacking away at, um, you know, back in C sharp code, or I'm doing React or Redux, or, you know, I'm doing not, not like it's necessarily more complex or anything because there's nothing wrong with web design. Uh, like web design itself, like if I'm doing WordPress themes and stuff, that, that seems like a terrible uh, job for me. But um, the, the actual, you know, style and templates and, and, you know, making these, these, you know, these. Basically, if you're going to be in UX, like I see nothing wrong with UX because UX engineers make a lot of money. They just they study com human computer interaction and uh, they understand you know what colors make people feel a certain way and how to position buttons and do you know and that stuff takes a lot of talent and is very very important for every website, every business you know to be able to drive transactions from start to finish and things like that. So UX plays a huge key in that, but. Um, it's funny because if somebody were to ask me if, I, if I'm passionate about it now, I'm really not. So I might as well answer that freaking question right now in this video because uh, I'm knocking out two uh, in one video. Um, but, but the truth of the matter is I, like, I don't have a whole lot of passion to come home and start reading uh, Smashing Magazine. In fact, I haven't read Smashing Magazine in probably two years. Um, number one, the site also started going down. It started falling by the wayside in my opinion. Like, there was too many guest appearances. You know, somebody was like, hey, I started a blog and it's got 10,000 people a month. Now let me go ahead and give my expertise on some latest bullshit. Um, but the thing is, is I, I think that stuff comes and goes, man. Like right now in my life, I'm not really too interested in that. But if I get into, you know, more website stuff, more content stuff in the future, I might be more interested in it. But like right now, um, you know, I want to build my music website and movies website again one day, and, and uh, I'm kind of waiting for a, a key moment to jump back in it, but uh, it, 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 it hasn't arrived yet, man. Like, between, uh, you know, just working and coming home and doing YouTube, like, I don't have a desire to spend, spend a lot of time on these things. So if, if you're kind of in the same boat, maybe, where you're learning – uh, all kinds of different things that you need to learn day in and day out, all the kinds of deadlines that are, that are involved in, in going to school because, I mean, I've, I've obviously gone to college myself and I, I do have uh, an understanding of, of the deadlines. In fact, that's what I hate the most is that, you know, certain things have to be done at, you know, this particular time. And usually I go with online courses so I can wait until the last minute uh, to get stuff done and it just I create extra stress on myself, uh, unfortunately, but it's because I'm juggling so many things or at least that's the excuse I give myself. Maybe, that, maybe I'm just lazy, but... um. I don't know. So the, uh, the you know this is where you're at right now. You don't know where you're going to be a couple years from now. I would say stick stick through it because honestly, even if you can land this this computer engineering degree, you can get into other things. Assuming that this doesn't work out for you, because obviously uh, the majority of STEM graduates in the United States uh, can get into something else. And I, I don't know exactly where you're from, but um, I would say that that it's probably a similar situation for you that you can find something somewhere else. Uh, assuming you have that degree, but if you've come this far, I wouldn't, I wouldn't close the door on it now. Now, if you were asking also, uh, what other stuff is there for you? Well, I mean, have you looked into like, you know, maybe, um, you know, something like the Raspberry Pi, um, or uh, maybe even trying to, you know, get into some basic robotics or something, or even game programming if you want to try to transition. Because it looks like you're doing a lot of web stuff, so maybe the web doesn't interest you. So what about gaming or like Unity Engine? Um, I mean, there, there's also, I mean, what about making money? I mean, does make, I mean if, if sometimes I think uh, the possibility of being able to make money doing some sort of engineering job or, you know, some sort of side project that I'm working on is, is another motivating factor. It's like, hey, if I, you know, get good at this technology and I put it all together just right, 
you know, this thing has the potential to make money. Now, nothing ever has ever worked for me, and for most people, they don't ever, you know, have that kind of success that you hear about online and uh, in the news and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that, that can be a motivating factor as well. So, um, I don't know, man. I've had some shit jobs, dude. Like, I've talked about them in this, in this, uh, in this, uh, on this channel before, but, I mean, my jobs ha have been, you know, HVAC, so 150-degree attics, you know, just slaving away and um and that wasn't even as, as really as bad i mean some of the stuff that's even more degrading than that is like you know making pizzas and um you know stuff like that like i, I worked for this one boss who was such a prick um I, I was also a young jerk myself but uh it was this like dive of a pizza joint and he was paying minimum wage but trying to work his uh, associates as hard as he possibly could and we're all like either fresh out of high school or um, you know, just graduated in my, in my position. And, um, I don't know, man, I just, I wasn't putting up with it. I, I only worked there for a short time, but, um, I don't, I guess it, it could be worse is what, what I'm trying to say that, uh, it could definitely be worse, but, uh, don't work for somebody that's going to burn you out though. That's, that's for sure. Because it's tough when you have to go into work and you have to think and you're getting paid to think and come up with creative solutions, but then you're not given enough time. To be able to actually or given the environment to be able to you know be creative so uh, it could just be the environment that you're in right now uh, but let, let me know man um i guess uh, if you want to reach out to me again uh, just give me a few extra details of like where you're at right now how far are you away from getting your degree and um, you say you're developing now so who are you developing for um, all right man thanks for watching and uh, have a good day guys bye